high. We're going to start. On behalf, on behalf of Brooklyn, on behalf of Flatbush, on behalf of all the people that are in this room, it is our greatest honor, Rabbi Kalish, to have you here. Um, my name is Fagy Zakheim. I'm the wife of Shlomo Zakheim. This is my daughter, Michal Clarer Zakheim. And we were thinking, like, what is, what is really our reason that we wanted Rabbi Kalish here? Like, there was no doubt we want Rabbi Kalish here. And there's one answer to what it is that Rabbi Kalish and my husband Shlomo Zakon have in common. And Rabbi Kalish, that is the love of Rabbi Kalish for every single, every single kind of Jew. And my daughter wants to tell a story of how my husband also had a tremendous love for every single type of Jew. And that it would be our greatest honor to give the night over to Rabbi Kalish. So we call it. So we're very fortunate that we, Baruch Hashem, continue to hear stories about my father. Um, it's 11 years since his Petira. And, um, and amazingly, I don't think that a week or, or I, think, I don't think a week goes by that we don't hear a new story. And today I actually heard an amazing story which ties straight in to the conversation my mother and I had about the similarity between Rabbi Kalish and my father, Allah Hashem, Allah Abdul Bain Chaim Chaim. Um, which was that a friend of mine shared with me today that her mother, who um, used to come visit her in the mountains, she was in the same area that my parents were in, and her mother was a Gioris, and she didn't really know many people. Her English was not her first language. And when she would come to shul, she would you know, feel a little bit like unnoticed. She said that there was never, ever a time that my father came to shul and didn't notice her and make her feel good about herself. And anybody that knew my father knew that he would do that for every single person that he would meet. If you were with him, you felt like you were important and you were loved. And, um, and I know that our family for sure has tremendous gratitude to Rabbi Kalish for that love. Definitely, personally, in our own family, we feel it. And I know, obviously, from people that are sitting here that it goes far and wide. And we're, we're very, very, very grateful to have you in our life. very much to Dr. Zakheim. Thank you so much to Mrs. Clare. I was not Zaycha Bechayev to know Reb Shleimer. I didn't have that schus. What I am Zaycha, my wife and I, every single time that we speak to Dr. Zakheim, every single time, just the fact we walk away feeling better about ourselves. The compliments, the kindness, the love, my wife showed me texts that she gets and tells me and repeats the conversations, the warmth, the love, the care. So I, I say I do, I do know Reb Shleimer. I say, I asked David Clara on the way here, I asked him in the car, tell us about your Zayda. And David was talking and I have to admit, I admit, I listened to what he said, I heard the things, but much louder than what he said, and I was thinking while he was saying, I was thinking he's describing his Eda, the love of life, the love of people, the chaos, the energy, the passion, the larger than life. And I was just thinking about what David brings in Durham and who he is, who you are, probably tells us more about your Zayda than even what you said. And David in yeshiva, now a dorm counselor, whose warmth, whose care for everybody. Maishi and I spoke about this, about David, that certainly every person deserves love and care, but there could be a tendency, the cool guys, who certainly deserve special attention. But every person counts, and David's 
love of Yidin, and inclusion of every single person. Sometimes when a trip happens, you can predict who's brought on the trip. When David does and takes guys, I don't know who's going to go. Everybody's possible. Everybody's included. And when he's talking about his aid and describing the care for people who may be overlooked by others. So then I just understand David and feel that, yes, I'm zayichet to have a shaykes to Reb Shleima. And just the general care and love that this whole family, the Clara Mishpach, Dr. Zakheim's whole family, the Weiss Mishpach, the entire family, all the different siblings, I'm zayichet to be close to Ari and his his love for people and care for people, it, it just dominates this mishpacha, a lover of Yidin and Chiyos. I want to say many people have come together. It's an incredible crowd. And it's not about anybody speaking. We come together to be together. I want to try to share a chedesh too, but the ikr of this gathering is we're Yidin. We stand together. We come together. I was Zaych as a youngster in the city I grew, grew up in. There was an old Rav, very beautiful man. His, I'll say his name because it's Kedai to mention a beautiful person's name. His name was Rabbi Ramnik. And Rabbi Ramnik, before every single Chag, would make a community event. And he would gather people in the community before Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur, before Sokis, Pesach, Shvois before every Purim, before Hanukkah, he would gather people in the five towns. And I had this sense, I had a sense that it's important to go. And I want to say, I don't know if I remember one word, it's probably in there. He was a beautiful Rav and said beautiful Torah. I don't know if I could tell you one word right now. I don't know, I have to think. Could be I can remember something. But what I remember is the maimit, is the gathering. The gathering will stand with me forever. That Yidin got together before a chag. That Yidin united, that Yidin were tzazamen before a yamta. That is the chag itself. A mayed is a time of gathering. A mayed is Am Yisrael with Hashem. Hashem with Am Yisrael is a gathering. And I remember fondly, and it was important to me, and I would try not to miss one of those gatherings. I appreciated the Rav. I appreciated his Torah. But mostly it meant something. It seemed right that Yidin gathered together in Kelm, on the door of Kelm, during Elul was a sign. And the words of the sign said that when there's a Melech, the best thing for a Melech is a unified am. Anybody knows I'm very into institutions. I study, I try to read books from time to time. I ask one of my sons who's well read to read it and share. But I'm interested in companies and organizations because it's important to me that a yeshiva runs as a healthy organization. And nothing is, it's, it's so frustrating if a company has this Rebbe, doesn't like this Rashiva, who doesn't like this, and we want our sons and daughters to learn in that environment, is not conducive, it's not a healthy organization. Somebody was starting a beautiful yeshiva in Eretz Yisroh, and they were, we were talking that the first 100 Bachram were coming from our yeshiva. So he was asking me, what would it take? What would it look like to start a yeshiva that the guys would be successful? I told him the first thing, the first thing, I beg you, all the rebellion should like each other. By us, the custodian this week from Dr. Zakheim's family is an older man who was very, very sick, the custodian, he's my friend. After 20 years of working together, we made a pact that we're each gonna give another 20 years and let's do another 20. Al and I made a pact. He was deathly ill two years ago, and we prayed. I prayed, guys in yeshiva prayed, and Hashem listened to our prayers, and Alan is working. This week, Alan took his first helicopter ride of his life. He never had gone in a plane. The joy on Alan, Alan's my friend. We work together. He gives care to the yeshiva and cares about the organization. 
And I told this Yidin Eretz Yisrael that I beg you in your yeshiva should be unified. People should get along. Everybody on the same page. Bachram deserved. That's a healthy matzah to be surrounded. Our beautiful people, what we need, what we want, what somebody, Reb Shleima, who everything I hear, a lover of Yidin, as Dr. Zakheim said about him, as his daughter related a story about him, a lover of Yidin, the ichor of this mind is we're together. I want to say, I want to say in sincerity that that we started a little late, we started on time. The main point of the event is people schmoozing. That's the people meeting, people being together. We'll learn Tyra also. Yidin being together, coming together. That Yidin are united from different places, different kinds, different, each one unique, but the unity of our people, that's a beautiful am. We're better since we've gone through since we've gone through the last months, we're, we're definitely more united, but we for sure have work to do. That's the ichor of this moment before between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Our beautiful people coming together is the ichor of the moment. I wanted to start, I don't just want to say it, I want to start singing. And then we'll learn also. I want to start, we'll start singing, the things we could all sing together. Let's start with a couple of songs we could all sing together. Maybe the first song we'll sing together is Ke Liyata Vaideka from the Balatanya. I think our people, it's been a beautiful year. It's been a year, I call it beautiful, hard, tragedies for certain, difficult, but I say beautiful because we're more united than we were a year ago. I say beautiful because we're prouder yet. The word a yid matters to us more. The topic of a yid, a yid. We see a yid, we feel closer. As we started clearing how many friends we have out there, we've recognized in here, we all have to be close. So it's been a beautiful year, but there's been challenges as well. And we say, we thank you, Hashem, we absorb your kindnesses. And Eloikai, when midas adin, that which is hard for us, that which we don't always know where you're taking us, Hashem. We say you're you're smarter, and we have faith. You're taking us somewhere. We have a faith in you, Hashem. It's interesting. My wife, my wife pointed out to me, we were talking, we're trying to keep up what's happening with our people. And Hashem B'Siyata Deshmaya allowed that Hezbollah was appointing a new leader. It seems they were zeroing in on a fellow to make him the new leader there in disarray. And Hashem was Mizaka us that another enemy of our people, another person who wants Yidin to be hurt, Ibud Rishon Rina, and he was killed. So I said to my wife, what's the man's name? And she was struggling to tell me. I said, what's his name? So I thought maybe she didn't want to say she's very sensitive. She doesn't like to look at the face of a Russia. She, she doesn't want to say a Russia's name. So like hint it to me, write it. So she says, okay, she figured it out. She says his name is Hashim. Now it's spelled H-A-S-H-E-M. She didn't want to say his name is Hashem. <laughs> but the guy who was just killed, Hashem, the enemy, his name, that's his name. You could look it up. H-A-S-H-E-M. So we were talking, what a name. And my wife told me something precious. She said that our enemy's name has that name as a lesson to us. Yaakov Avinu says about seeing, about seeing Ace of Kirois Pinel Kim. I don't see enemies, I only see you, God, Hashem. I see you, Hashem. The Bardechever on the Pasik and Tillim, on the Pasik says, Laira Ra Kiyata Imadi. I don't fear evil because you're with me, Hashem. The Bardichever famously said a mushal. The Bardichever said that a father dresses up as a bear and he's scaring his son. It's a very difficult mushal. So why would a dad dress up as a bear? It frustrates me, the mushal. And the son says, Tata, I know it's you. You're scaring me. But I know it's you. Just take off the costume, Tata. 
Oh, you know it's me. So what's the point of the costume? And the takta shows who he is. Says the Bardetshva, La'ira Ra, I'm not afraid of bad. When I'm when difficult things, I know it's you, Hashem. Kiata imadi, I know it's you, Hashem. You're right here. You're with me. And he says that's the schus for Yeshua's, the Bardetshva says. And my wife said, maybe that's why Ashkocha had it, that the name of the Sine was Hashem's name to say we don't see a Sine. We're in the Rabbi Shalom's hands. Difficult, difficult. Difficult situations. But let's sing Keliata and let's pray as well that Hashem, we should see open kindness from Hashem. And we should also have the strength on the difficult moments to be Miraimim Hashem. Difficult, not said lightly. But let's say it as a prayer. And let's sing it together. Everybody say, if we can start. <coughs> Before I ask Shlomo to sing another song, I want to tell you something that happened. Something that just happened in Yeshiva. They're Adim. They're Adim here. I want to share something really to, to, to share the next song and to tell you why I'm less inclined to speak tonight. And I'm not saying I know I'm up here and talking, but the Icar as we sing, I mean honestly. And the Icar is not to say drushes, not to say not to shout out and say fiery drushes, that's not it. I was thinking, I was thinking in yeshiva. I was thinking before Rosh Hashanah, I'm preparing. And certainly I want to come to Rosh Hashanah, I want a Rosh Hashanah for myself. And I also, as a menahel, we had a very big crowd in yeshiva. And I want, I have an achrayas, a responsibility to lead, that we, that we come to Rosh Hashanah, have a beautiful Rosh Hashanah. And I had a lot of thoughts, and my, I was late at night in my house, I made a decision. And I thought to myself, Daniel, you're forcing too much for yourself. And I've learned this a lot from the guys in Yeshiva. I came in stark, and I'm in the middle of learning about my soul that it's not an exterior thing. You don't have to create something intense. You don't have to create Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, let's make like a fiery matziv. You don't have to do that. You can actually quietly and silently and really connect to God. You can connect to the Chag in a meaningful, real, authentic way. There's a pasuk that I want to share that I think is saying this, Elio the Navi, after an astounding gathering, an astounding, one of the most astounding gatherings in the history of our people. And there were members of Klal Yisrael that weren't sure, that had all different doubts in Emunah. And there were Nevi Habal, people who believed in Avay Dezara, who were contending with Elio a Navi about what the truths of life were. And famously, there was a big famine in Klal Yisrael, and it was the backdrop to this historic, all of Klal Yisrael are gathered, and at this amazing gathering, it's going to be proven who's right. Is Baal right? Chas v'shalom. Or the service, Hashem Echad. And Elio, and Leo, they make a contest. And of course, Elio, the Navi, is mispalel to Hashem to send the fire down miraculously, to accept the karbanais of the Nevi'eh Yo'emes, to prove Hashem's oneness. And of course, miraculously, a fire comes from heaven and shows our entire people the truths that Hashem will Kim. And the rain comes, the famine ends dramatically. And all of Klal Yisrael says in unicism, says to Zaman, says as one, Hashem Hu Eloikim, one Hashem, Hashem Hu Eloikim. 
The kind Hashem, who's ever benevolent, and it's true there are difficulties in life, there's Eloikim, but it's all one. And it's all Hashem, Hashem U Eloikim, Hashem Echad, even our difficulties. Hashem, with His kindness, is bringing us somewhere. And on Yom Kippur, we say those words, Hashem U Eloikim. And all of Klal Yisrael joins one team, Kulam Ke'echad, unite under Hashem's banner. And then a short time later, Elio Anavi has to run away from Klal Yisrael. Things don't get perfect yet. You would think such a dramatic experience, Elio Anavi runs away, and famously he comes to Har Chayriv. And there he has an incredible prophecy, an incredible nevuah. In the nevuah, he sees heavy winds, storms that knock over mountains. He hears thunder, lightning, all different explosions. And the Rabbi Nishleilam says that Hashem is not in all those explosions. But he hears a cold demamadak, a very soft voice. And he's told there Hashem is. The way I understand Hashem is telling the Navi, you can have all the fiery drushes, you can, the deepest place of closeness to Hashem is in the heart of every yid, it's in mine and your hearts. I made a decision before Rosh Hashanah, I'm not giving any fire of Shmuz, no. Air of Rosh Hashanah, you could give in yeshiva, guys were sitting there, a bacher who's here, said to me in the dining room in yeshiva, this is crazy. Every yeshiva I'm in, they give such a shmuz. I like smiled at the guys we sang a little before. No shmuz, none. I decided that for me, that's what I'm giving to you. I'm not, I'm not forcing anything. I decided I'm not pressuring myself to feel anything, Rosh Hashanah. I'm actually just showing up. I'm showing up in simplicity. I'm going to follow what my heart tells me. I'm going to be in the room. I said hello to everybody. I came very relaxed to Rosh Hashanah, different different. I want to say in yeshiva, we didn't force, we didn't plan. The davening ended five o'clock. Five o'clock, davening finished. Shkiyah was a little after six. We started a sudas, yom at five o'clock, no guzma. It wasn't, it's, this is not like to say that we compete, what time did you end? We could have ended 10 o'clock at night. And it wasn't tiring when we were done. When you force things, a husband and wife are sitting to supper. They could sit for hours. It's not tiring. When you force and you're not yourself, you're tired out. I just, I'm Zaycha, my son is here. And I'm Zaycha, I want to learn. I'm inspired by the guys. I decided to try to learn more tiring. I'm trying to learn a first seder. I didn't do great L, but better than before. And it's thanks to my son. The first week, it was too intense for me. I really like learning. I don't need this intensity. Intensity often replaces the real thing. Nobody sits with their wife at a supper. It's like, you just put your mishpacha and enjoy it. And we can really be with Hashem. I really like learning. I sit with my son. It's like Olam Haba. We sit down and we learn. We study Hashem's Torah. He says, I say, we ask, we think, argue, we agree, we learn, we grow. You don't need to force it. It ended late. I said to my daughter, after David, you must be wiped. She said, wiped, energized. Now, it doesn't mean it's not tiring. It doesn't mean that there's not an aspect. But it was so comfortable. And what I want to say to us all is we're capable. We don't have to force. Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Aser Yisimei Tshuva. All of us, we're here. We want Hashem. We want him. We don't have to force. It was an Iraq, it was wild. I felt more this Rosh Hashanah than most years, not trying to feel, just trying to be present. It's interesting, somebody could do a study, the Shaifer and Yeshiva, guys come and they run. Somebody was making fun of me, said, this guy, my friend ran, he doesn't even do this, he doesn't do this. I said, step back, stop making fun. Observed, the guy ran to the Shaifer. The Shaifer talks to Yidin deeply because it says we're the Amashem, 
we're mam Hashem. It really says that. We're called to blow a shaifer, to kind of, me, you, are called to blow a shaifer, to hear the tkiya shaifer. We're mam Hashem. So I want to ask Shlomo to sing. This will be, soon I saw the crowd is still shy yet. We'll do something, we'll get everybody singing Yehud in a minute. But I'm, in a few minutes. But I'm gonna ask Shlomo the words that Am Yisrael has been saying. And these are, these is the, to me, this is the call to Mama Daka, where you find Hashem in the deepest way, is Lecha Amar Libi. My heart says deep inside of me, every Yid's heart says to oneself, it says on behalf, Lecha Rashi says it's Bishlichusech. As a messenger of God, our hearts say, Bakshupanai, seek me. And when we hear our hearts say it, as Panecha Hashem Avakish. A Bakr in Yeshiva, I asked him last night to describe his journey. We were sitting with a very special, world renowned doctor, a Yid who's helped many Yidden. And I felt we owed him to explain the Yeshiva. He came to visit Yeshiva. So I asked, I called the Bakr, who's now a dorm counselor. I said, explain your journey in yeshiva. He described starting, he's partying, he's doing his stuff, healing, feeling good, and he's waiting for the day somebody's gonna tell him, okay, now let's go, get stark. Okay, you've partied enough, get stark. And he's waiting, and waiting, and waiting. When, when do they tell you to flip out? And it never came, it still hasn't come. And he described the journey of finding himself and really connecting to Torah, to Tefillah, to Hashem, because it's in a Yid. You don't have to do it. You don't have, you don't have, to, you don't have to do anything. It's in a Yid. We really have an Ishama. Me, you, and every Yid, real. We have ourselves, quietly. We don't have to force. We can actually feel what we feel and look inward patiently and calmly and nicely. And he described the journey of finding stuff in himself. And he described his journey of, of as he's finding, what he's finding inside of himself. All different things. Maybe some anger and a lot of love. Maybe some difficulties and a lot of beauty beneath them all. So I want to ask Shlomo to sing, but I'm asking, open up our hearts to understand Lecha Amar Libi. Lecha means Bishlichos Shel Hashem. Our hearts speak as messengers of God. And it says, Bak Shupanai, seek me, seek me. And as Panecha Hashem Avakish. Then and only then we just seek Hashem. Any other voice, loud voices, rash, crazy miracles, Eliyahu Nabi was taught that's not what ultimately changes our people. It was a beautiful miracle that we're thankful for. And we needed it. And sometimes that explosion is good for us. We see beautiful miracles all the time. But ultimately, day in, day out, to follow Hashem, l'cha amar libi. We have to hear our heart talk inside of us. And when we hear it quietly and calmly, we hear as panecha Hashem avakish. When we hear bak shu panai, seek me, as Panecha Hashem Avakish, we really seek Hashem. We look to grow, we look to get closer, we look to bring out and shine our light. So I'd like to ask Shlomo to please sing that song for everybody, and then maybe we'll, then we'll sing together, then we'll share some time.
Yeah, you want to do this?
I want to share. I want to share a, a, a chat in one one word in our Torah. The Navi that we read on Rosh Hashanah says a pasuk. We're not going to read it betmiya as some refreshim read it. Ha ben li Ephraim. Ephraim is another name. Our people have many names. Am Yisro, and one of our names is Ephraim. Why we're named after specifically Ephraim, I saw in a Sefer, is that the two offers, the two offers that are marked, Ephraim is plural offer, and there are two offers that are essence. One is the offer of Avram, of Anoichi, offer of Efer, the humility of Avram Avinu. By ourselves, we're small in number. We're small in number. What's special about us, we're small. Anoichi offer the Efer. On our own is not we are our preciousness. Lies. But the secret of our people is Ephraim, is the double offer. And the secret of our people, Reb Ephraim, the secret of our people is the double offer, is the offer of Yitzchak Avinu, that's sober, that's gathered on the Mizbeach of Hashem, is that we're loyalists to Hashem. Ephraim, the secret of the people of the Jewish nation, is that we're loyal to Hashem. The Akeda, that we read in Rosh Hashanah. Mitzarech HaRanoichi offer ve'efer for ourselves, we're not arrogant. We're not flexing our muscles for ourselves. Anoichi offer, you know what our beauty is? You know what the specialness of Am Yisrael is? We're the Am Hashem, the Akeda, our loyalty to Hashem. Our sincere commitment, our Messiah Snefesh, are given over to Hashem, Ki Imanu Kel. That's what's special about our people. So Hashem says, Ha ben Yakir li Ephraim. Klal Yisrael's a special child to me, is the ben Yakir, Im Yelet Shashun. That child that the parent delights in. That child, that child. I was thinking before Rashan about a friend of ours who's a Ben Yachid, he's an only child. I was called up before he came to Yeshiva by a relative. And the relative told me about this child. He said, I beg you, look after this boy, I beg you. He said his grandparents were survivors and they were getting old in age and their son was above 40 and he wasn't married and they left Toilum Abba, the grandparents. Years of prayer, years of hope. And after they were in Toilum Abba, there are a lot of strings up there people pulled. And the, ch the son was Zaycheh to a zivug, and he had one son. That son is in your yeshiva. I beg you, he's a ben yachid, he's an only child. I beg you look after him. Just know he's an only child. So many prayers, so much hope for eternity, so much hope for the future of Klal Yisrael rests on a Ben Yachid. The boy is, shines, he's in Eretz Yisrael, Steigen. He learns Bechavrusa all the time with his tata. He helps out. The parents have a little farm in New Jersey. He goes and he helps his parents. He's not a Ben Yachid, he's the Ben Yachid. And Am Yisrael is the Ben Yachid of Hashem. I was Zaychid to know a Yid, Rabbi Mendel Zatzal. He was my pre a Rebbe. He taught girls for over 50 years of his career. For two years, I think. Very few years taught boys. And I was Zaychid to have this beautiful tzaddik. And he used to walk around smiling. His later years in Los Angeles, he would say, ah, I'm Hashem's only kid. Ah. He felt he was, a, he was a Ben Yachid, Hashem's only child. And Am Yisrael is the Ben Yachid of Hashem, B'ni B'chayri. And Hashem says, Ha Ben Yachir li Ephraim, im Yelet Shashuim, Midei Dabri, by when I just speak about Klal Yisrael, Hashem says, Ki Midei Dabri, by Zachar es Kerenu Oid. I remember him, I longingly think about Klal Yisrael, I love Am Yisrael, but what's the Eid? Zachar es Karenu. What's the Eid? What's that word Eid? The Eid is a difficult word. So I want to say a pshat. And I want to say pshat in that Eid 
is that in the in the Telem, the Halalukas, in the Halalukas, the beautiful Kapitlach Telem that end that beautiful Sefer Telem, David HaMelech says in the Halalukas, Azamre Lelekai Ba'oidi. I sing Tashem Ba'oidi. Pashupshat means while I still exist. But we have to say something else because the words before say Azam Ahal Hashem Bechayai, which means I sing Tashem while I'm alive. So what's Azam Lelekai Ba'oidi? And based on the Malbim, what Pshat is, what David HaMelech is saying, every single one of us has a unique situation based on our own story, based on our own circumstances, based on our own talents, based on many, many, based on mistakes I made yesterday. We all have our own place. And there, we bring out a kid Shemayim that nobody else can bring. We all have a unique light to bring to the world, to unleash to the world. We have a beautiful and brilliant light, unique to me, unique to you. Only me, only you can bring out to the world. That's the ID. My own uniqueness, my own specific story. And the Zemer, the Iker Zemer, Zemer is a more powerful song than a hollow. Perhaps the high part. My most powerful song to Hashem is specifically in my unique station, in the Oid Shali, in my own unique matziv. And that's what Hashem says, Zachar as Kirenu Oid. I remember the Oid, the uniqueness of every Yid. I love my people, and everybody's station and circumstance counts and is important. I remember, I remember the Oidi, the uniqueness of every single Yid, the Oidi. We have a night in Yeshiva where I asked Bachram to write odes, to write odes on another guy, to write an ode. Somebody read publicly, Tzvi Ben Leah Miriam, who's healing, he came to Shear today, to Rai Silverman, to his Rebbe's Shear over Zoom from his hospital bed and he cracked some jokes and he came to share today, he came to share today. Rai Silverman, I might say Shabbos, a nice. He's talking and joking. He, Rai Silverman came to my house, his Rebbe, to watch his Rebbe, Rabbi Silverman, in the week after his Talmud was in an accident, Rai Silverman, would, he didn't want his kids to see him so shaken, hours a day in the Blue Ridge Shul. I'd sneak by to see him, as did my kids, shaking like a leaf, praying to Hashem and crying for his, for his Talmud. He came to my house this past, might say Shabbos. It's way late at night. He knocks on the door and he's shaking like a leaf. My son didn't know what's with Rai Silman. We thought he had dangerous news to tell us. My son Menachem just gave him a bear hug. He needs a hug. But when he got words out, he said, I spoke to Tzvi for 20 minutes. I spoke to Tzvi for 20 minutes. There are no extras in our people. So in Yeshiva, we were saying to him, the, the Bachram finished Tehillim nine times over Rosh Hashanah for Tzvi, B'schus Refuah Shlema. But we daven for one, there are no extras in our people, none. Nobody's replaceable. Every single person is needed for K'fayt Shemayim. That's the Oid. Zachar es Kirenu Oid. I remember every single person's unique condition, unique situation. Somebody feels inspired, great, you have a place to serve Hashem. We have moments we feel we're out, we feel Shivisi Hashem, it's a kfira to think Hashem is not there, that I can't reach Hashem there, I can't serve Hashem there, I can't connect Hashem, is a kfira. Wherever we are, there we can find Hashem, there we could shine a light, there we are important, there we're Mekad Hashem Shemaim. 
So Zohar as Karenu Oid, I remember the Oid, the unique station. Hashem, when he thinks about Am Yisro, and he's misavet for Am Yisro, he wants, it's a yelet shashun, but he remembers Oid, the unique station of every single Yid. And the Yid in his unique station is Azamr Lelikai Boidi. I take my unique circumstance that is solely mine, and mine right now, with my own challenges, my own difficult thoughts, and I serve Hashem there. For every yid is necessary, every yid counts, and every yid is important. When Maishu Rabbeinu was collecting, he announced that we need donations for the Mishkan. He called out to Klal Yisrael, we need donations. We're an incredibly generous people. We're wildly generous. Am Yisrael is giving. People were describing the numbers that were collected for Eretz Yisrael the first few months. The generosity of our people, our people is Mika Amcha Yisrael, the people of Hashem. And Maish Rabbeinu calls for donations and Klal Yisrael goes wild and gives crazy amounts of stuff to the point they I never seen, you know, they have crowdfunding today. Did anybody ever see an organization like say, stop, stop? Typically, uh, they go over, they're always going over, that's our people, we're always making it more and giving more. Here, we were giving so much, they had to announce, stop giving, we have enough, die. Die, we have enough, no more. And then the, the count comes in and says the psukim, we had, we had material needed for the mishkan. Says the psukim, it was dai v'hayser. There was enough, it nailed it. V'hayser, there was leftovers. Estar chayim HaKadosh, that's a contradiction. If there's enough, that means it was nailed. That's one story, a miracle. It got the exact amount. If there were leftovers, that's a different story. What is dai v'hayser? I dai, it's not hayser. If it's hayser, it's not dai. Say the story. Hashem say. They collected material and there was extra. We have a rule in Shas. Bichlal masai If you raise $200, there's 100 in there. Say they gave and there was extra. And obviously there was enough material if there's extra. What does the Torah record? It was dai that was enough Vahaiser and there was extra. Answers the Archaim HaKadosh, it was a miracle. The Etzem, they collected way, way more than was necessary. But a miracle happened. When they put all the items together, when it was put together, so there was enough to make, the Arain is three gold boxes. There was enough gold to make ten boxes, thirty. When they put all the gold together, it just made three boxes, miraculously. So it was dai v'hayser, there was extra, and a nace happened, it was the right amount, there was nothing left over when they made all the kalim. A miracle. Two questions. Question one, my son asked me when we learned our Chaim HaKadosh, why she asked, so it should, it should say hayser v'dai. It's backwards. First it was hayser, there was extra. Nachdem, it was day, a miracle happened. It says day v'hayser, it tells the story wrong. It wasn't day and then hayser, it was hayser then day. Question two is why have the miracle that way? Just have, we gave and it was the right amount. That would be miraculous. We gave more and it was the right amount. And the lesson is, and the truth is, now I don't want to say the lesson, it's not a teaching, it's a truth. The truth is there's no extra yid. None, none. Everybody's contribution is necessary. I'm gonna say something publicly. I'm gonna say something, I wasn't gonna say it recorded, I, I wanna put this on record. I'm not convinced as schools that we should spend so much on remediation in high schools for sure. I think we should, I don't agree in Waterbury to do a lot of remedial work. But a guy doesn't have to read. Will serve Hashem. I think we would do well teaching, and of course, we have teachers who teach remedial, excellent, wonderful, do a little. But let's teach even more that you're precious. We need you. 
We need you. We're trying to make everybody a certain thing. We need you. So you can read. So you're dyslexic. We need you. Your prayer, yours. We need you. Nobody's extra. We don't have to fix you and make you and medicate you. We need you. Me and you, every year is needed. There's no extra in our people, none. Nobody's extra, it's a lie. Somebody once learned to read the Kavod. But the, let's teach that a yid is necessary. Call out Hashem. Call out in English, call out without words. Speak, talk, you're needed. You don't have to become and then, you have. I like, there's a knock on Gedalim books. I love Gedalim books. People say, what, he was at Tzaddik when he was two? Yes, yes. And so are you and so are me. We have a soul that shines from one end of the world to the other. We have a light, every one of us, Nishmas Yisro, have a light that's necessary for the world. It's good to read that he was born at Tzaddik. So what makes a tzaddik? There's no work, there's much work to protect your light, to share your light, not to be duped by the Eight Sahara, not to recognize our light. The Eight Sahara has an interesting name. It's a Pasuk in Micha. The Eight Sahara is called the Tzifaini, a hidden one. Why is he called the hidden one? The Eight Saharas are very blatant. Mine come to me very stark. He doesn't hide so much. Now, by the way, I'm sure he also tricks me. He says, you're not mad, and I am. You're not insecure, and I am. So he tricks, he does that plenty. But that's his name? That's one tool he sometimes uses. Usually my Yetzirah is very open, he's not, he's not subtle, he doesn't come, he's very clear, the Yetzirah, usually. Why is he called a Tzifaini, a hidden one? That's like something he rarely uses. His name is Sifaini, the hidden one. He hardly hides. Strange name to the enemy. I wonder, Rabbi, say that he's called Sifaini because I think the main job of the Yetzirah, he's a mitzvah of hidden. He wants me not to know who I really am, and you to know who you really are. He wants us not to know. Ask any parent of their children. There's a precious light, a beautiful light. When a guy steigs, parents say, oh, I got my son back. We have a beautiful light, each and every one of us. A light that the world needs, that Am Yisrael needs, that can't be replaced. And the task is to protect it. The task is to know it. The task is to share it. The task is to build it, of course. But we have a beautiful light. I wonder in all the helping, and of course I applaud, all the resource rooms are great. Tzaddikim and Tzidkaniyas, so we should have them, excellent. But I just say the Iker focus is to teach our youth, the youngster, you read, you don't read the this, you that. We need you. We need you. By the way, a person who's needed runs to Tyra, is drawn to Tyra, the soul is drawn to Tyra. He'll learn how to read, I promise. But he's drawn to it. She's drawn to it. Each year it's necessary. The donations were dayam. They were exactly what we needed for Ashra Ashrina. No matter what came in, no matter what somebody gave, every single donation was necessary. It was dayam. That's the spiritual truth. It was dayam. Nothing was extra. What every single yid found to give was the, exactly what we need for Ashra Sashrina. Now we live in a physical world. In the physical world, it came out uneven. Hashem made a nase, heiser. The heiser is that was extra, and the nase is that it fit in. But it was in the spiritual world. It doesn't say heiser v'dayam. There was extra, and it became even. It was dayam. It's true that what everybody gives is necessary. The miracle of the extra was only to bring this out, that it should be expressed and seen in our world. So Hashem made it that a lot of stuff was put together and it forms the exact so everybody could see 
that everybody's contribution is necessary. There are no extras, there are no add-ons, there's nobody who's not needed. I was watching the davening, Rosh Hashanah. I watched the Bachar who sat there from early in the morning to five, and I watched the guy who came in for 10 minutes and dug in and, and, and listened to the shaifer in sincerity. There were no extras that day. There are no extras in our people. Each person's sincerity, each person's own kesher tashem, each person's beautiful light is necessary. I like tzaddikim books that you see they would tzaddikim when they were little kids. It's wonderful. And these beautiful people protected it. And then they shone their light and shared it with the world. The Yitzhahar is called the Tzifaini because he tries to hide our own light from ourselves. He's a mitzayus of hidden. All his job, all his task, is to hide our light from ourselves. So on this, as when I say, you made tshuva. Tshuva just means be ourselves. Shine our light, shine our light, bring ourselves. Our nation is going through a lot. And we have to stand up as Yidden, as B'nai Yisrael, as B'nai Yisrael, Heilige Yidden, to stand up, shine our light, share our light. In each one, a unique way, a unique whatever the kaychas are, it's interesting in yeshiva. We're a funny school. Sometimes the school's known for their basketball prowess. They have a great basketball team. Sometimes they're known for a great hockey school, a great artistic place, great sing. It's always exciting. We don't know who we are. The new group come and we find out people have contributions. We might be the best tiddlywing school this year. We don't know the guys yet. We'll find out. We have beauty inside of us and everybody's necessary. Stop saying what we are, and each one find the light. We have an ishama and a beautiful light, it's true. It has to be known to us all, whoever we are. We have a beautiful light to share with the world. Is there work to be done? But of course, but it's work that's consistent with our inside, not a fight against self. Is there work to be done? For sure, the tzifaini works hard to block ourselves from our own light. There's work to be done to get in touch with the beautiful light that we have to shine and must give the world, and it's not, it's not replaceable. I'm going to ask Shloyman to sing the whole Hebrew, should sing. Please join in. Let's sing that song, the peel off the clipper. But I'm not singing a beautiful song. I'm, I'm asking the Hebrew. Shloyman is singing beautifully. But we're asking the Olam something. See it in ourselves, be done ourselves, Lakavskos, and be done others, Lakavskos.
coming to Yom Kippur, and then the beautiful Chag of Sukkot. And if we could ask that beautiful prayer, that request Hashem pull us close for the entire Am Yisrael. But I'll ask Hashem, let's stand here, the Chavra, and let's sing Yigol Enoch. Come, come, come. Everybody stands, we'll sing it together. Let's sing Yigol Enoch.
from his beautiful family and specific celebrating such chaos and noticing each person I said before and I lost my train of thought that Tzvi when he was sick we had a gathering for his chos before Shalem and a friend wrote an ode wrote a poem about him and we have a night in yeshiva we used to call it Ode's night for now on we're going to call it Oid night an Oid and I say we all have an oidi, a zamr l'alikai b'oidi. Write our own oid about ourselves, and write an oid about each person we know. And the mission, what I ask everybody here for us all, is to see favorably Am Yisrael, look at Kla Yisrael in a good light. Start with ourselves, dam l'kav to see ourselves in a beautiful light, and to see other yidin, to have day nine to see others. I'm gonna ask, we said we'll, we'll do we'll do a song together. Yehud, if we could do the Bardet Shemanigan together. But I ask everybody in the room to pray. The Bardet Shemanigan is a minig Yisrael to quote the Bardet Shemanigan, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, that many Rabbanim and Yidnu purposely quote a Dvar Torah from the Bardet Shemanigan. His birth, his yard site was in Tishrei, Chafei Tishrei, right after Sukkot. But there's a minute Yisrael on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to say something from the Bar Ditch, which we did quote him tonight. But there's an Indian because he saw good in Yidden. He brought a great light to the world in seeing Taiv and Am Yisrael. So I wanted together to sing his song, but I want the entire room to pray. To pray for ourselves to have good Enayim. To see the preciousness of our own soul and to see it in others. So I can ask you who if we could start a nice high key. <laughs>
has many, many needs. The Rabbani Shalom should send us Zayit our nation as a cloud to free the hostages of the Matar Asurim, to keep all the people in Eretz Yisrael, all the Taishvi in Eretz Yisrael, all the soldiers, all the Yidden of Am Yisrael, to keep them safe, to protect all the Yidden and all, wherever, wherever they live. Yidden who need many people, we should all go to so many chasmas. We should run to each other's weddings. People should have bracha, that's bracha, gemara, sin, the taiva, the bench, the yard.